Hey everybody, Gary Fong here, and this is a very impromptu YouTube video. I have a special guest, uh, Harold Hasselback from, ooh. Hey everybody, Gary Fong here, and I have in this very impromptu Skype interview, um, Harold Hasselback, who is the, uh, her, he and his wife Andrea run Blue Domain Hosting and Design, a template company that uh, for creatives, they'll do kind of online web hosting branding for you. And um, just a non-disclaimer, I have nothing to do with Blue Domain uh, professionally. I've met them uh, a couple times, but we know each other through the industry because they were hosting uh, these uh, very, very nicely designed uh, template websites while I was with Pictaj. So on one hand, they were doing websites and Pictaj was doing the image delivery and uh, production. So we had pretty much very much overlapping clientele and they knew that there were certain times in Pictaj where it was very frustrating when there were uh, service outages or things that we couldn't do to prevent disappointing our customers. And they're in that situation right now where they've had a, a server crash and um, you know they're having to deal with the emotional pain of uh, not wanting to disappoint their clients but disappointing them anyway for things that are outside of the control so uh, Andrea reached out to me and asked for some advice and the first thing I said is get out a journal and diva the hell out of it because you will then flip eight pages into the future and find that everything's going to be okay so the most important thing is as parents and I believe their grandparents now you know emotional health because you will emerge stronger and and um, with more poise and resilience than you ever had before but for now um, what I've always found is when you have an issue make yourself uh, accessible and visible to your clients and this is not natural for them because they're a very shy couple and um, so to my own credit, I coax them in front of uh, the camera. At least I did for Harold. Now, Harold has a very interesting um, uh, history. He was an NFL. He played actually played in the Super Bowl for the Denver Broncos. And then when uh, he retired, he found an affinity for web design of all crazy things, and he's extremely good at it. So without any further ado, I'm going to uh, transport us to Chicago. Uh, Colorado, where we will hear about uh, the history and um, about the turmoil that they're experiencing right now and what Blue Domain is going to do about it. And I think you will appreciate the commitment they have and the struggles that they're going th through. It's something we could all learn a lot from. Okay, let's go live. Hey, Harold, I am beaming in from Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. And hey, you are, are you doing? good. And you are where right now? I am in Parker, Colorado. Yeah. From my home, so. I'm looking out at some snow right now. How about you? Oh, we're clear here. Snow are you clear? last year more than a day or two. And they, oh, okay. About 70 degrees to a blizzard the following day, so. Right, right. So I got a really interesting call from uh, Andrea, and I'm glad that you guys um, came to me because you know of some of the heartbreak I've been through, through the same thing, uh, yeah, just yeah. to <clears throat> get the audience a little introduced to both of us. So I used to be involved with Pictage.com, and we were kind of in the same business, but not really. You were hosting websites, we were hosting images and producing prints and albums. Um, but I know that we've worked with you personally uh, for quite a while. Melissa yeah. Carl uh, had one of your sites, and pretty much all of my friends had, had Blue Domain sites. And we were all together at WPPI, and we were all pretty much kind of on the forefront of digital sharing and distribution of, of images. And that started, Blue Domain started how long ago? Uh, gosh, almost 20 years now, I think 18 years. <laughs> wow. like, we were like the first ones to do what we do. Yeah. And we, I remember we had a lot of synergy. There was a, there was, you know, we had a lot of clients in common at the time. It's right. about everybody who's picked out, you've blue domain and vice versa. So 
Right, right. Well, just to catch everyone up, um, I don't remember when I sold out of Pictage, but we sold, and then that it sold to another company, and it sold to another company, and eventually it folded. Um, mm-hmm. And one of the things that <clears throat> did kick it forward in the folding process was a server crash. And I'm sure that you heard about it because everybody heard about it. And thank God I wasn't involved, even though I would get a lot of panicky emails like, who do I call? And I I don't know anybody there anymore either. But um, those are something that uh, as someone in the company, you don't know what to do. You're just like frozen. And... (laughs) I, gosh, I, I couldn't empathize more with you. You know, I, I've seen it happen to a number of companies. Nobody's immune from these kind of things. Facebook, uh, as, as you, you all know, know. Yeah. it doesn't matter how big you are, or, or you can tell your clients, "Hey, we guarantee uptime." There is no such thing as guaranteed uptime because uh, they're ultimately machines. It's no different than a car; it can break down, uh, and it can have mechanical issues. But as, as much as you you want to be as redundant as possible. Um, there's going to be instances where, where that just doesn't uh, come through the way you want it to. And this was certainly, you know, uh, the negative swan song of our existence. And that it, was, it was really uh, eye-opening, a learning experience. But, boy, um, there was definitely a price to pay uh, for us. <clears throat> and that price to pay sometimes goes in the wrong direction where people are screaming for blood, right? Um, because they oh, think it's your fault. Question. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the common misconception, uh, particularly with our company, is because we have been around for so long, that people assume we have you know hundreds of employees and, uh, and, and uh, that, that just nothing could be further from the truth uh, in, that, in that respect. You have uh, a couple of programmers and um, it's pretty much uh, it's a mom, mom and pop shop, even though you have a lot of... Yeah. yeah. So tell me exactly so what... Ha- yeah, we, have, we, we wanted to keep it small. On we want to be intimate. We want our clients to know who we are. Uh, and, you know, there's been... There's an ebb and flow in this industry, as you probably realize, where... You know, there, there, there's going to be times of, of plenty and, and then there's times where things just aren't going the way they should because of issues like we've experienced here. And, and you know, we've weathered the storm through many of those. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we're determined to, to continue to uh, create a great product. Ultimately, we're web developers. I'm, I'm creative. I design all the sites myself. And I still do. That's from day one. From day one, when I used to upload thumbnails for clients, I used to crop individual thumbnails, post them up for the clients. And, uh, you know, we just evolved from there uh, to now where everything's drag and drop and it does everything for you. Um, But I want to be hands-on. I want to be intimate. And I want the clients to know, uh, you know, kind of our style. And I think a lot of that gets lost when you when you have these, these giant companies with a hundred different programmers and a and hundred different designers, um, where things start to look kind of generic. Sure. You know. Right. And that's uh, kind of what we wanted to avoid. Uh, but the other aspect of this is that we also have to be hosting, right? So we're hosting stuff, and that's not. At least in the past, it hadn't been our field of expertise. And as you experience things, you you live and learn, and you uh, you kind of evolve uh, in that respect as well. Where you have to adapt, and you have to know the terminology, and you have to know uh, the fixes that, uh, that that come up. And um, uh, as much as I've learned, uh, there's nothing that could have prepared me for this one. And I was just and uh, and the but, thing is, uh, is that. Andrea made a really good point yesterday. She told me that you'd been with the same hosting company for this entire time, so you saw no sign of anything like this happening. Um, yeah, we'd, we'd been with the same hosting company for a period of about, uh, I want to say, 15 years, and then we moved away to another hosting company uh-huh. uh, just because of things were changing. Things were starting to be much more cloud-based. Right. Uh, those of you are, are familiar with that. So we wanted to go to something that was more cloud-based. Which makes um, sense. Right. 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 And, and that was, again, that's just one of those evolutions. But when we switched, it, it, it became less familiar. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's when we started running into some issues. And uh, uh, 
the company that we were with, I don't know if they, they adequately did their job, but again, it was just a machine that failed mm -hmm. in the end. And, and it was, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, it wasn't all our clients that are affected, but you know, enough to where, uh, you know, it, it's it's the word of mouth that that, that comes out when, uh, uh, you know, there's a there's a it's called a blade now that's that's oh. got several servers on it. Oh, uh -huh. uh, so that's those those clients were all affected, and then, you know, it was a good percentage of our clientele that, that were affected by that, and. Uh, you know, that's when you run. Go ahead. And so they didn't have access to their image f images for how long? Well, we we had what was lost was the databases. So okay. what we're talking about there is the text on their sites. We were able to receive a database with the images. Oh, so we had the images and so forth. We could we could restore those, but there's nowhere to know. You know, you just get a big folder of images. Oh, and, okay. Uh, where we don't, you don't, you know, where to put them. There's a new site that has to be configured, so every single client that was affected had to have a new site configured <laughs> and had to re-upload all their content and uh, enter all their their data again. Which oh, is, you know, it's, a, it's a it's an astronomical undertaking for the clients, but this is when it's not advantageous to be a mom and pop shop. No, you have, no. You know, four or five employees doing all the work. Right, right, yeah. So what status are you right now in the recovery in terms of? Well, we've done a, a lot. So we've obviously done a ton of research where we've, we've uh, you know, found a company that uh, is, is at once cost-effective, but also that offers us the redundancy that we didn't have with our previous hosts. Okay. Again, we are still going with the, the hybrid cloud-based setup mm -hmm. uh, so everything is still backed up um uh, it's backed up much more efficiently and, and redundantly um and, and and it just runs more efficiently but also our communication is much more direct uh, mm -hmm. with the hosting company and you know for uh, our clients can attest to this is like communication with your clients is absolutely of the essence especially uh, so in something got, like this yeah when you have a disaster, Without, uh, you're all in it together, you know? Right. So for the most part, we have all our clients now have new sites, which, you know, part of the thing is we have a lot of clients who've had the same site for 12 years. I uh, probably you know, have a site on there. <laughs> right. You know? We started out as a company that was largely Flash-based, which, which Flash is now obsolete. Right. So a lot of these clients are now able to uh, have sites that are, are far more advanced than what they had before. Right. And, uh, and, you know, it ends up being a good thing for them where it's like, wow, now I, now I've got mo I'm mobile ready and, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm Google compliant. Right. And all those things that we did not have at that time, but, but it's amazing to me how many clients rarely look at their site because there's yeah. still clients who aren't even aware. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and as much as you send them emails or, or, or send uh, mass messages, uh, there's clients who don't update their email sometimes. Right. And they just are not aware. So we're still dealing with the repercussions of that. Right. Uh, you know, five months later. Yeah. And that is, you know, uh, you know, obviously it, it, it's, again, the vast majority of clients have been dealt with and, and, and are, are happy. And, uh, and that's something that, you know, I, I test the, the diligent work of my team too, because again, when there's, there's four or five of you entering every client, we're, you're working around the clock. Without a it doubt. Was, it was incredible to, to uh, what we dealt with at that time. We were, all of us were going off for two hours of sleep for, I think, a week or two straight. And we kind of go in shifts. We we're all helping each other out. And uh, uh, that creates a real bond between us as a team. And, uh, um, that's something that I'll never forget. You know? And I think what I like about that is that's something you'll never allow to have happen again. Without a doubt. You know, <laughs> for us, I don't think it would be survivable to go through something like that again. So you, again, you live and learn. This was, uh, I don't expect my client base to understand. They just want their side of it. Simple. I get it. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm the same way when, when I have a server that, that meet, requires a reboot, which happens all the time. Right. Regardless of the company that you're with, right. that you're going to require maintenance. And if you don't do the maintenance, you're in for bigger trouble later. Right. I, I get extremely antsy. Look, I just want my server up, right? Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what I would like to you know, co- convey to my client base is that, hey, uh, these things, um, they're touchy. And, and we have to do the diligent work that, that requires some downtime uh, in order to keep things running optimally. It's right. unavoidable. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's that's the thing that we're, we're, we're obviously trying to keep that to a minimum. Right. But uh, I know very well now uh, what is needed because the, the Internet is evolving at a rate that uh, is difficult to keep up with at times. The sophistication of hacking, the, you know, all those things, and, and Gary, I'm sure you're you're familiar with a lot of this. Uh, having been in the industry that you're in, uh, that people hack your stuff, people people yeah. try to steal images. It's it's crazy, and each time that happens, okay, now we're going to implement this protocol in order to prevent that from happening in the future. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that um, you know we're now more acutely aware of that than we've ever been before. Uh, so you know, we, although you wouldn't think. What what better company to go with than somebody who's gone through adversity like that and has, has taken all the steps to ensure that it doesn't happen again? You know, well, exactly. I mean, I think. And I know that um, if I went through something like that and went through all those sleepless nights, I would just say, give me one more chance. Absolutely. And the next time I'm back, baby, this is never going to happen or I won't live through it. You know, <laughs> yeah, with, with that question, and, and, and you know, with that respect, and the the, uh, the 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 overwhelming majority of our clients, a lot of times, wish that there was better communication, right? They want the four of us to to communicate immediately with them regarding their site, but the, what they don't realize is there's thousands of clients who all want that. So if we can't make the individual phone calls, like we wish we could. Yeah, uh, because we just don't have the team to do it, and I don't want to outsource that to somebody who might not be as familiar. Uh, they wouldn't have as the answers. We are with it. Yeah, they would just answer back and say, "We're doing the best we can," and it would right. just be a human voice. You know, you could farm yeah. that out to some of those services that have the you know the virtual operator. It's like, mm-hmm. oh hi, yes, we will escalate this to level four, but just know that we're doing the best that we can, and maybe that's kind of you know where it would be but i mean i remember there were a lot of times where i just kind of said look i don't want to hear from anybody i don't want to you know i'm just done with this but then i thought look um i bought into this program i signed up for this team and i've gotten a lot of rewards from it so i'm sorry but this is a commitment right yeah you owe it to your clients uh, to an extent you have to hear the complaints you have to hear uh, what is being said, and, and, and you know, react accordingly. Uh, you know, so with respect to that, we've, we've updated and we've done some tremendous updates to the actual product that, that we're selling. Mm-hmm. But we're also going to be doing more with regards to customer service, doing things that are a little bit more interesting. We're going to offer a full service option where, you know, uh, somebody from our team will actually put a site together for you. Oh, nice. Send us- We'll send us images. We'll create the shell so that we ensure that hey, you've got this great foundation. Uh, we're designers, so we know it's going to look good, and uh, and and that's the foundation that you start with. And then the upkeep is so simple uh, with the sites. And I don't think there's a lot of companies that, that do that. I mean, I'll be doing that myself. Uh, that's something I tra- take a tremendous amount of pride in. And, uh, um, but. You know, it, it's it's. I want to do whatever I can to make it a, a positive experience for our clients. Yeah, you know, which is difficult to do when when there's things that are just completely out of your control that happen. Right, uh, but they happen. But I think it's the it. best thing right now at this moment, and this is what I told Andrea. The reason why we're having the Skype call is because there were so many times we didn't have Skype like this, and mm-hmm. we didn't even have YouTube when Pictar started. Right, so mm-hmm. I couldn't broadcast out there. It's like you know, just how I personally was committed to making things right. You know, you couldn't do that. You could just send out an email, but you couldn't, you couldn't really do this. 
And I think that's important because um, people know that when shit hits the fan, some people run away and blame others. Yeah. You know, and a, and a true committed person stays in the crap hole, and takes the beating, but is committed to, to, you know, to not abandoning the project or you or uh, your files or whatever. Oh, without question. I mean, that's that's the, 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 the platform has changed so much. And with email, like, you don't know if, if you're blocked or, or something, if, if all your clients are going to get you. That's what we deal with with regards to email. So it's going to be nice to have this out there to, you know, also put a, put a, put a, a face to the name. I think a lot of people think I'm this, this little white dude with a beard who sits in his office. And, <laughs> that, well, that's a very yeah. common misconception. Of, and, and, you know, I want people to know who we are. And I think yeah. it's time that we came out of that shadow and, and just kind of, uh, look, there, there, there's human beings behind this process. Uh, and and uh, we're not vindictive. We're not making anything crash on purpose uh, to spite you, or you know, there, there, there's nothing could be further from the, tu- the truth. And I know I speak for my entire team when I say, look, we want this to work. We're grateful to you as our clients uh, for for having us, giving us the ability to feed our families. Yeah, uh, you know, that's that's the number one thing that I would like to convey. Right. Right. And to see the people behind the name, I'm not, I wasn't picturing a former NFL football player. <laughs> <laughs> not many people do. Yeah, not many people do. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, just to share a little story, I had UPS lose one of my weddings. Um, mm-hmm. So I had nothing. And it was an absolute disaster. It wasn't my fault. But what I did do with a client was I scheduled a status phone call five o'clock every afternoon um and so that i would tell them exactly what we had found and you know we were offering to fly to the ups center and in um salt lake city we were going to go through and comb through everything to try to find the film but without a doubt i said i'm not going to disappear i'm going to be you know phoning in with a status five o'clock every day and um in the end, UPS had fell off the truck and some car ran over it and they sent it back and it was all just, you know, blown. But uh, what happened was <clears throat> I sued UPS on their behalf. They got like $12,000 and then they went and, you know, got a honeymoon, uh, a paid honeymoon. And then they got all the pictures from everybody and we made a nice album. But the bottom line is, is that there was so much adversity. I mean, so much lost sleep of losing a wedding and it made me double down twice as hard, dedicate myself even more. And I wound up getting 12 wedding referrals from a couple whose wedding I'd lost. So, you know, this is, I know you guys are tired and sleepy and yeah. kind of like beat up. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because we've had the same thing where, you know, certain clients are happy, but you're also dealing with personalities. And, and, and when you're dealing with loss of data, uh, as you can attest to, you're dealing with memories, right? Those aren't things that you can get back right. in many cases. And for some clients, it's different than others. Yeah. You know, you have some clients who haven't updated their site in, in weeks. They're grateful. Hey, new site. Love it. Let's do it. And then there's others who update their site on a daily basis yeah. who have blogged and who have, uh, you know, these incredible uh, posts with, with images that, that, that don't exist anywhere else. Those kind of things can't be recreated, and, and I understand that frustration. You know, as a creative person, when I lose a design that I've done that I'm proud of, that, that, that I like, it pisses me off, you know, and, and that's, that's they're entirely entitled to that. Mm-hmm. And I understand that. And, uh, you know, there's, there's many of guys, you just wish there was a, a generic answer you could give that makes everything okay again, but there just isn't. You know, and and your story there really, I can empathize with that completely uh, because it, it rings true so much. Uh, you know, you, you're dealing with, uh, you know, those aren't memories that you'll ever get back. Yeah. You know, being a, being a wedding and and, and uh, you know, it's it's good now that all, almost every person who goes to a wedding has a camera on hand. Right. So, right. Well, every even kids now have. Oh yeah. So. You, you, you always have options uh, with regards to that. And that's, that's what's, 
you know, that's what's great about it. But but you know, there's no substitute for the the proficient the professionality of a a photographer who knows what they're doing, who knows light. Oh yeah. So um, and that's I think the one thing if I that, can that, add that, if I can add one thing too is that um, from what I hear from a lot of people, they trust the cloud too much. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have backups of anything unless it's on Google Photos or, you know, Apple's whatever, the cloud storage, right? And, um, you know, we have to be reminded that keep your stuff somewhere, you know, because... Yeah. Um, Without question. I mean, I, external hard drives are, are crucial. Put everything in folders and, and, you know, every gallery that you create, just plunk them in a folder. It takes a few seconds to do. Uh, but then you have it, and then you know, recreating, creating a site. Honestly, with the database that we've created, you can put it together in a matter of a minute or two. Mm -hmm. Well, that's except, but I'd say within an hour you can put a site together mm -hmm. that is um, that has all your content on it and the foundation of of what you want to convey to your client base. Mm -hmm. And that is now, that's the difference from, you know, again, I was referring back to the, the day when I first started where I had to crop thumbnails and, yeah. and upload them. Those days are gone. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not a difficult thing to do. But I also encourage, I mean, you shouldn't keep a site for more than a couple of years because the internet changes. Uh, the, the 72 DPI images that you upload, uh, that you uploaded, uh, you know, uh, seven or eight years ago, are now 150 dpi and why not if you're a photographer you've got to show your work in the best light possible well plus you know if it's been a couple of years you know we didn't have uh websites that needed to be responsive right, right. so exactly. um so that's something and you know i'm always the optimist here but i'm thinking look if your site that might have been a good thing that your site's not there because then it'll force you to rethink about who you are, how much I've changed as a professional image maker and give your site a, you know, give your site a refresh. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I just think that things happen for the best reasons and there might be some people out there that find a boost in their business because they're just like, wait, I connect better with what I do now and this site is much better. I hate to say it, but I can look at any of my sites, comb through it, and say, man, if I had a weekend, I'd love to get, get into this thing and tear into it and improve it, right? Oh, without question. And, and there's been, what I've experienced recently is that there's been uh, clients who were saying, look, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm going to try out Wix or, 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 or Squarespace. And I've told them, well, give us one more shot. Let me put together one of our new sites for you. Mm -hmm. And then when I do it and, I, and it's done in an hour, you know, I just transfer data over from their old site to the new. Uh, then they're ecstatic when they see what the results are. And, and they, they see what the, the, how their product, the site, the shell uh, of, of how they display their work is everything when, when it comes to, uh, um, you know, uh, conveying an image to your clients. And I think that's that's what's, uh, they need to be aware of that. Yeah, and if, plus when you're dealing with- If you've got a site for five years, it's just, it's going to look so radically different. Right. Gary, right. shut my door here. Oh, I, okay. I just pushed it open. Okay, guys. sounds good. It's fun looking at other people's home offices. <laughs> I'm like, look, yeah. <laughs> see, it looks I've like got, you got a headphone I, case. I very well traveled, so I have a lot of stuff from Africa. And I lived in Africa for five years. Oh, cool is that? Man, and that's I lived awesome. In Indonesia for two, and Canada. So I've got little knickknacks from just about everywhere that I went. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, yeah. I wanted to give you two some advice because um, I have been through so many things in my life. I mean, federal jury trials. <laughs> I've been through, you know, pitching movies in, in studios in Hollywood. I mean, I've been through everything, every kind of downfall, every kind of high. And the thing is, is that what I was telling Andrea yesterday is like, at this moment right now, journal this out, like the visceral pukey smell of how painful this is yeah. because invariably eight pages later after a disaster 
I'm like going, oh my God, I'm just, I love how everything's going right now. You know, you Mm -hmm. wind up with more poise, more strength, more stature, more bulletproofness. And then yeah, gratitude, no you know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, it's also to enable us to just clean things up. Mm-hmm. Generally, you know, eliminate the bad. I mean, I, I, the previous hosting company that, 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 you know, where this issue occurred, I, I it, it, it reared its ugly head. So, you know, I, I think this is not the kind of company that I would like to work with in that scenario. But... You know, and, and that, that just came from, they're doing the polar opposite of what I've described to you now, where, you know, there's a lot of finger pointing and yeah. while you guys did this, and that, that doesn't do anybody any good. You want no. solutions in those situations. No. Buck stops right? here. Exactly. So, so I feel like taking responsibility, uh, you know, with regards to, to uh, definitely our part in it, is, is number one. Uh, we're sorry. I mean, that's like, like look, this is horrible, mm-hmm. uh, and it hurts you, uh, but it also hurts us uh, when when it hurts you. So, uh, God, I, I wish there was a way to say it that that would make everybody's go. You know what? You're aces, and <laughs> let's move forward. But that's just not the way it goes. I think we we know that. And uh, yeah, but you know I, what? I let me do it now, though. Ain't it that we've cleaned up and that we've you know. We're really, we've, we've launched a new website for us and, uh, you know, kind of revamped our image a little bit. And I think that was, it was, it was time, you know, call this blue domain 2.0 and absolutely you know, right. We're not going anywhere. So, you know, mom and pop shop and we're, we're, we're the, uh, David versus the Goliaths out there, which is kind of ironic given my stature, but <laughs> I, I think that, uh, I think that, um, We'll, we'll persevere. There's no question in my mind. Yeah, you absolutely will persevere. But the thing that I want to make a pitch for you guys right now is I would rather go to a company where the owner will stand up and say, this was hurtful, this sucks, but we're doing what we can. We're still optimistic and we're committed and we're staying in the trenches and we're not going to drop you off. You know, we're right. not perfect but we are committed and I myself as a customer, what more do you want? I got a guy who just got his ass kicked and he's going to put up security fencing around his house and he's going to set up alarms and cameras to make sure that nothing happens to your, to your uh, images, or your content in the future, you know, right? right. So who else are you going to want to choose than mm-hmm. you guys, honestly? Yeah, and I, I've just seen it so much o- over time. I, there was a, a time that we had a company that actually tried to, hey, anybody who's, who's uh, it was another company, and I'm not going to name any names, but they took advantage of another company's misfortune, saying anybody who's suffered at, at the hands of the server crash that this company experienced, we were offering free sites over here. I guess remember. Who crashed, <laughs> guess who crashed a week later? <laughs> Right, it happened. It's nobody's immune to it. No, and no. And, uh, and and that's that's the thing that uh, people have to realize. It. It's it can happen anywhere. Yeah, you know. Yeah, no, that's true. And I do remember what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, and I think. <laughs> I think that we just really have to just kind of like go by feel, you know, contact Blue Domain and see how it feels. Do you feel like these people, you know, have their front porch light on and and are open and really want to take care of take care of you? So, I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm in, you know, I had a long call with your wife yesterday and just heard about the pain that you guys were going through, but also kind of the unfairness of being blamed for things that aren't your fault. Or when people take things and extrapolate it and think that, you know, big, you know, blue domain commerce doesn't care. And I'm like saying, dude, let's put you guys on camera. You know, you guys are a mom and pop shop. Let's let people see who you are and how you feel about it. Yeah. And, you know, and just and just give that a go. And I, I couldn't be more appreciative, uh, Gary, because uh, I think the idea is really what's going to be. Uh, we're, we're shy. We're we shy away from this, this spotlight. We, we shy away from, uh, but but there comes a time when when people just have to see and they have to see 
uh, you know, that, that there's human beings behind this and, and, and that uh, uh, nobody, nobody on my team is an asshole. Everybody here wants to do right by their clients. And, and uh, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a standard that, that me as an owner, I, I set for uh, my team. And uh, I think we're very passionate about it. And, and, and I, don't, I think that, that uh, passion above all else is, is a requirement for being successful in any industry, you know. Oh sure. yeah. In past career, you can't play football unless you have pa passion. Yeah. Because uh, there's a lot about it that's not fun, and you no. have to, you know, you have to go through the hardships, and those are the lessons that I kind of take with me from my past life. Because it really is like I, I live this life, and then boom, I go right into another, which couldn't be more uh, diametrically opposed from what I did previously. And, uh, um, but it's the same thing when you're on a team. You know, you're all working together, and then yet your quarterback throws an interception, and then you busted your ass, and you're so close yeah. to it, but one mistake. And then you know what? Yeah. You take your licks, you hang out together as a team, and you say, next year we'll do better. Yeah, no question about it. And, and, and you know, the great thing about football is that it's a microcosm of real life everything happens more intensely and more uh, suddenly, you know, in the space of a season, that, which is 16 games, uh, you know, you make or break it. And it's ultimately, it's just a game. But the lessons that you learn from it, and I coach now, mm -hmm. it is just really uh, mirrors what you experience in life every day. And, you know, yeah. This is one of those uh, fumbles on the goal line kind of moments uh, that, that, that we're now trying to uh, recover from. So, Right, right. And I want to say the same thing about wedding photography. What kept me in it for 20 years, it, it is a microcosm <laughs> of everything that you could experience, but put into one day, you know, yeah. you get all yeah. the family neurosis, right. you get the fake stuff, you get the patronizing stuff, you know, it all just comes together and you can, it's, it's a concentrated capsule. Right. And, and the ups and downs are so intense, you know, like, right. Like, Moments that are incredibly rewarding. And ultimately, that's what you come back for. Right. Those, those rewarding moments don't mean anything if you don't have the hardships that, that come before it. Yeah. And, and I think it makes it that much more rewarding when you feel like, okay, we've overcome this and we're flourishing. Right. You know, that's the point that we're trying to get to. Exactly. Oh, you guys will get there. I have no doubt. But I wanted everyone to see who you were because... I appreciate that. <laughs> it's really. I, I think that it, I think that this video might shock a few people, <laughs> people who I, who've only seen my name in a ticket. In that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But they just need to go to your Facebook page and see all the pictures of you out on the stadiums with you know your your yeah. former life and yeah. Right. But you've had a wonderful life, and this is again just it's a fumble at the goal line, but. You're there next season, determined to try harder. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. Well, good deal, buddy. Um, I will put in the YouTube uh, links to uh, where to go. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably a good idea if, um, you know, if there's some communication with your clients that they can look at this really cool interview from you talking about what's important to you. So I think people need to know people on the internet are so fast to kick ass on strangers behind, you know, hidden identities on keyboards and it's mean. Yeah. The, the, it, it goes back to the whole uh, troll culture that exists now. Yeah. Uh, because not many people would ever say the things that they say to me in email in person. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, say anything know. bad to you in person. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's, you know, but that's the way it is now. It's like people have all kinds of guts, you know, the situations where uh, it, it's impersonal, you know, and that's, that's the unfortunate fact of the, of the matter. And uh, uh, hopefully this will bring us a little bit closer to our client base. I think, I think it will. I think so, too. Yeah. Because while it is impersonal and lonely out there, when we do see that there's real people and real faces, we really go and gravitate toward them. That's me anyway. Yeah. No, no advertising I... like knowing the owner, you know? Absolutely. And then it's, I've actually, you know, dealt with people that I've worked with who have only communicated via email, like in a similar situation. And when I meet the person, man, I really like this guy. Right. And then, the rapport between us completely changes.
Yeah. We just can't convey personality or anything like that over, over email. Right. Know? Right. Right. So this is the face of blue domain, everybody. <laughs> you and, and your uh, wife. <laughs> unfortunately, it's mine. <laughs> and she'll put a little bit better face. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay. Well, so good to talk to you. Great talk. Great to talk to you too, Gary. And 